Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to InfoGamer. For this video, I have a very exciting lesson. I'm going to show you the method that I use to create my Diablo 2 style werewolf in my campfire game. Now this method is known as something called rasterization, which is where you take a 3D model and you render that model at different angles and through different animation loops to create a 2D sprite sheet version of that 3D model. Now I'm going to give a little bit of a context behind rasterization. So if you want to skip ahead directly to the tutorial, go to this timestamp here. Now there are countless games that utilize this method. Many of the old time photorealistic games, such as Doom, Diablo, and Diablo 2, even Mortal Kombat was a form of rasterization, only they were taking real photographs. Some newer games include Clash of Clans and Super Mario Run. And many times you can't even realize that you're looking at a rasterized image of a 3D model because of the resolution of your sprite sheet is high enough you can actually end up with no visible difference between your sprite sheet and the 3D model. The main purpose and reason for rasterizing your 3D models is actually for optimization. If you have a high res 3D model and you're trying to render that 3D model on a mobile device or on an older computer as in back in the day, your game would probably end up suffering greatly. But if you can take that 3D model and rasterize it into a 2D image, then your mobile phone or the iMac G3 that you're trying to play on in your school library back in 2000 could actually handle what seemed to be better graphics. This is especially beneficial for games where you have a fixed camera, so 2D and isometric games. But in the case of Doom, the way they handled it is they had all the monsters always facing the player. Now the reason why it doesn't work for games where you don't have a fixed camera is because those games allow the player to look at an object from any angle. And you can very quickly see how taking a rasterized image of a 3D object at every single possible angle defeats the purpose of the optimization benefit. Now next time you're playing a game and you can see that the camera is fixed, look very closely at the sprite images. And if you can see pixelation that's less than the resolution of your phone, there's a good chance that that's a rasterized image of a 3D model. But that's enough in my history report, let's get on to the tutorial. Now the first thing that we need in order to create a Diablo 2 style monster is a 3D model. So here I've gone to Sketchfab, and I think the next monster I'm going to add to my game is going to be a zombie. And so if I search zombie and I select downloadable, I can then scroll through all these options until I find the right one. Here's a pretty good zombie. I feel like the quality of this 3D model is similar to the quality of my werewolf. And this model is free. So I'm going to go ahead and download it. Then to get a basic rig and animation for this 3D model, I'm going to use what's called Mixamo. Now Mixamo is an Adobe product. And one thing that's really cool is if you have a Creative Cloud subscription, then you can use Mixamo for free. So I'm going to import my zombie model. Now this 3D model actually already has a rig that works with Mixamo, and so it didn't ask me to specify where the joints are on this model. But once my model has been uploaded to Mixamo, I can then select from a huge library of different animations. And so if I want my zombie to walk or dance or fight or die, I can make it do that. And some of the outcomes are actually quite funny. Now once again, a lot of these animations are very basic and rudimentary. And depending on your model and how Mixamo rigs your model, you'll probably need to fine tune these animations. But because I'm not really a modeler, rigger, or animator, I like to use Mixamo as a template. And since my game is a mobile game and all of these are going to be rasterized, having the animations be absolutely perfect isn't a priority. Now there is one specific animation that I do want for my zombie, and that is the injured walk animation. This is a very clear and obvious choice for a zombie. And I was actually having trouble downloading it as an FBX and having it work in Blender. And so I'm going to download it as a Colada or a .dae. Once we've downloaded this file, we can then import it into Blender. I'm going to use the same Blender file as I used for my werewolf, as it's already set up to render everything the way I want it to be. Once we have the model imported into Blender, the first thing I'm going to do is scale down this model so it's comparable to my werewolf. I can then disable my werewolf in the scene. And then I want to apply the zombie textures that came with the model. And so with part of my zombie selected, I'll go to the materials property tab, and I'm going to add an image texture for the base color property, and I'll set it to my zombie PNG. You can see that my zombie is quite shiny. To fix this, I can go down to the metallic property and just drag the slider down to where I think it looks good. 
And now if I do a render of my zombie, we can see how it looks so far. Now here you can see that the output image at first looks like a normal render, and then after a second or two, it changes to a pixelated image. And this is actually all happening with compositing. So if we go to the compositing tab, here you can see all the nodes that make this possible. Now I didn't come up with this system. I actually got it from this video here created by Default Cube called I'm a Pixel Art Master. This video is actually really amazing. It's the only video that I was able to find showing how to create pixel art this way. Many of the other videos showing how to create pixel art in Blender will show you how to create pixel art in Blender, but it always requires your models to be a certain way, such as simplified textures, step shading, and enabling the freestyle outline option, which didn't work for me and the werewolf because I needed a transparent background, and the werewolf's fur caused there to be freestyle outlines all over the place. But this video in using compositing makes it so that you can pretty much take any 3D model and it'll rasterize it into a pixelated image. So if you want to, you can go watch that video and then come back to this one. Or when you're done watching this video, you can go watch that one. I've left a link to it in the description below. Now I'm going to modify the animation that I have on my zombie because currently you can't see the zombie's face. So I'll rotate the head to be more up. And before the walk animation, I need one frame for the idle animation. And so I'll make the zombie so that it's more standing up instead of dragging its foot from behind. Now to render out your monsters, you're going to want to have a camera. And I've set up my camera and this camera pivot object. So the camera is looking down at the monster at about a negative 20 degree angle. And if I rotate the camera pivot by 45 degrees, I can get the four cardinal directions and the diagonals. I then also have an area light to light the monster. And then for my render settings, I'm rendering out a 1080 by 1080 square. I'm rendering these out as PNGs and under render properties and film, I have transparent selected. Now as child to my camera pivot object, I do also have these red cubes and these are just so that I can see the edges of each sprite when I combine them all into a sprite sheet. Now to do the rendering, we want to make sure that the start and end frame are at the beginning and end of our animation. Then we can go up to the render dropdown menu and select render animation. This will render out my 18 frames, after which I'll move all those rendered images into its own folder. So this will be front walk or down walk. We can then go back to Blender and I'll select my camera pivot object and I'll just rotate it by 45 degrees. And then we can render our animation again. We're then going to repeat this process so that we have each angle of our 3D model. Once you have all your renders completed, we can then open up Photoshop to combine them all into one sprite sheet. Now, rather than going through each one of my renders, resizing them and fitting them onto the sprite sheet, we're gonna set up Photoshop with the sprite sheet generator script. To do this, you can just search Photoshop JSX sprite sheet, and you should be able to find several different scripts that'll work. Now I found this one, which I'll link to in the description below. Once you download the JSX file, you'll need to go to the file system of your Photoshop and under presets, and scripts, this is where you'll want to add your JSX file. Now you'll probably need to edit this JSX file to add in the resolution presets that you want for your sprite sheet. To do this, you'll want to find the size items variable. Here you can see they have all the different resolution presets. And to calculate the resolution of your sprite sheet, you just take the resolution of each sprite. So in my case, each sprite is 300 by 300. To get the width, you multiply it by how many columns you're gonna have. And to get the height, you multiply it by how many rows you're going to have. For me, I have 19 columns, so that'll be 5,700 pixels in width. And I have 8 rows, so that'll be 2,400 pixels in height. Now in Photoshop, I'm going to need to create a new file, and it's going to have the resolution of one of my renders. And the next part's very important. We need to import all of our renders, but they all need to be organized in the correct order for their layering. And that is your very first frame needs to be the very top layer, and your last frame needs to be the bottom layer. After this, I'll resize my image so that it's the resolution I want each sprite to be. After which we can go to File, Scripts, and select the Sprite Sheet Generator. If this option's not showing up, you might need to restart Photoshop. I'll then select my Sprite Sheet Resolution by setting the width and height to the presets that I added. You'll then make sure that the Source option is set to Document Root Layers, and I've disabled Ignore Child Layers and Flatten Image. 
after which we can click OK. Depending on how many sprites you have, this process might take several minutes or even hours to complete, but at least you don't have to do it yourself. Now once it's completed, Photoshop will open a new file with all of your sprites laid out on a grid. So we'll go ahead and save this file to our Unity project, and inside Unity I'll change the filter mode to point no filter, change the max size, and the pixels per unit. You'll want to set the sprite mode to multiple, after which we can click apply, and then we'll click on the Sprite Editor button. Inside the Sprite Editor, we want to slice up our sprite sheet, but I don't want to include any of the red border lines. So I'll slice the grid by cell size. I'll set the pixel size to 280 by 280, because that's 300 minus 20. We'll then set the offset to half that, so 10 by 10, and the padding to be 20 by 20. Then I also want to set the pivot to the bottom, and I'll click Slice. Now in my Avatar Prefab, I can duplicate the Werewolf object, and I'll replace its sprite with my first zombie sprite. Now to create the animations, I'm going to go through each animation that I have on my avatar, and I'll add in the sprites for each animation on this new object. Now when I test my project, I can select the zombie monster instead of the werewolf, and when I play my game, and my character transforms into the zombie, you can see that I can now walk around as a zombie. Although the animation looks a little slow compared to the speed that my character is moving, so I'm just going to add in twice as many frames for the zombies walk animation. And now it's looking a lot better. Now that's everything I'm going to cover in this lesson on how to create rasterized 2D images from 3D models. If you enjoyed this lesson, make sure that you give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And subscribe to my channel so you can be up to date with all of my latest videos. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.